Hello, everybody. I'm Molly Gordon, and I'm here with Jennifer Loudon, who's a very good friend and uh, also a best-selling author and an amazing woman, an amazing coach. She really is. <laughs> Bring it on. Let's spend the whole interview just doing that. <laughs> what I love about Jen is I feel so important because she's my friend. <laughs> why friendship works. <laughs> I think that must be it. Oh, so funny. <laughs> so a few years back, Jennifer and our mutual friend, Michelle Lisenbury Christensen, created a program called Teach Now. And they're about, to, Jen is about to offer that again. And I wanted to talk to her and learn more about what inspired her to create this program What's going on for teachers? Because I know a lot of you who read my newsletter and are in my network are teachers. And, and I know that you have issues that this program will speak to. So that's what we're up to today. Yay. Yay. Cool. I think, the, you know, if I can jump in and say yes. probably that we're teacher right away, put some people off and they might start to click away. Don't click away, people. I want you to own the word teacher. I think it's really important. We have a lot of baggage around that, world, te- around that word. It means I'll be poor. It means I have to be an expert. It means I have to be the sage on the stage. I have to know it all. And that's all false. And we really work on blowing those ideas away and teach now and helping you own what you do know. It doesn't mean that you're not always going to be learning and growing because you love to learn and grow or you wouldn't be in Molly Gordon's network because if you look up learner in the dictionary, there is a Molly's <laughs> picture. <laughs> and that's one of the things I love about you. Um, and I'm jealous of about you too, what a great learner you are. Um, anyway, so yes, teacher is a word I want people to embrace. I think we're all teachers. And by embracing it, we dignify ourselves. And we often think then about ways that we can become better teachers and it, make more money at it if that's important to us. Right, right. So anyway, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, that's perfect because my first question was was what led you guys to create this program? What was the inspiration? Well, the inspiration was a mutual friend of ours, um, Eric Klein at wisdomheart.org, who is one of my spiritual teachers as well as dear friends and one of the officiants who married Bob and I this past um, summer. Someone I look up to, he's been a steady and devoted spiritual practitioner for 30 years. And a few years ago, when before Teach Now was created, he was really talking to us about owning his lineage and experience as a teacher. And I'm like, oh my God, if you can't do it, Eric, this is a problem. <laughs> and then I thought about how much I'd suffered as a self-made teacher because I was called, as in the phone rang, <laughs> to teach when my first book, The Woman's Comfort Book, became a word of mouth bestseller. And I was all of 28. I had no idea what I was doing. And people, this was before the internet. Wow. <laughs> I, didn't, I couldn't take a course like Teach Now. So I suffered from years and years of feeling like a fraud, of not knowing what I was doing, and not knowing how to design exercises, thinking I had to have all the answers. And Michelle had had a similar experience because she's such a prodigy. So that's how it all came together. Yeah, yeah. I remember actually uh, the Brain Trust retreat. Jen and I are part of a group we call the Brain Trust, where Eric was confessing that or revealing that. And uh, so when Michelle and, and Jen said they were going to do this, we we're all going, yes, yes, do this now. <laughs> it's Teach now. Each other's. But this is a great example, everybody, how you're, you can hear somebody who you look up to have a problem, and that can wake you up to something that you can own to help solve that problem. And of course, that happens in our own lives. But sometimes it's harder to see it in ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which you know, is kind of a, a separate thing, but that whole idea of external feedback and support that we all need. Yeah, it's a huge, this, our brain trust has been so beneficial to all of us. It's really astonishing, and it's so important. Yep. Good stuff. So you have had, by last count, 1,006 students through Teach Now. 
Yep. I, isn't that, that's amazing. But I thought today, I don't know if those are all unique students because there's alum that have taken the program two or three times. So th that might not be a unique number. And I don't know if I can find out. So it could like, be 967. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I'm yeah. just not sure. So I yeah. just want to be transparent about that because I'm really proud of that number. <laughs> that's right. Well, I would be too. So what are some of the things you've seen or heard from people that they've gained from Teach Now? My favorite story is actually on the sales page, and it's uh, uh, acting and singing coach Stephen Sparling. And he talked to us, and the, the actual, you know, what he sent us was quite a bit longer. We edited it down. But he, he basically was teaching. He was doing well at it as a, a teaching people to sing and to act and getting good results. But he hated it, hated mm. it, and was going to quit. And he kept seeing Teach Now come through his world, and he'd be like, that's not going to help me. Nothing's going to help me. And then he took it, and like before, like just the beginning, I don't think we were even one or two classes into it, he began to like relax mm. and enjoy his teaching and change a lot of his stories about teaching. And then he took it again, and he launched an online program. I mean, how do you teach singing online? He started to figure it out. So I love that because I think it mirrors my own experience with teaching, how to come out of the suffering and, and something you and I have talked about and you've coached me on in the past is how our stories mm -hmm. get in the way of reality. And sometimes reality sucks. <laughs> you know, you're not going to, any story you have isn't going to make it better. But sometimes what you're doing that you think you don't want to do anymore becomes something you love because something changes about your interpretation. Right, right. So here was an established teacher. Yeah who had lost the juice for it and was really, as I remember you telling me about this, d um, excuse me, dreading teaching. Right. And that comes, that comes through for a lot of people. Other people in Teach Now have always wanted to teach, but they, they haven't known how to get off the ground. Mm. Um, so a lot of people, I've, they've come back to us after the course or during the course and really finally made an offer and started teaching people. Other people have discovered that they wanted to teach all along, but they were scared to because they thought it meant they had to be poor. Oh, very, very true in traditional teaching environments, but it doesn't have to be if you're self-employed. Wow, that's great. I never thought about that. Yeah. Teaching, I'm going to be poor and I'm going to be, I'm going to be used. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, that does make a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. I love seeing the story shift and possibilities open up. And there's a gal um, who teaches pole dancing. And she's been really developing offers and figuring out ways to meet people and to bring them into something she loves. And so, mm. you know, that's pretty unusual, pole dancing. <laughs> right, right. But, you know, the what I'm hearing from you is that the teachers who do this program, they not only become more confident, but it sounds like their, their whole um, creative relationship to teaching changes. Yeah, if anything, the strength of Teach Now is the inner work. And we definitely talk about marketing and nuts and bolts. I think we could do that even a little bit more. And mm -hmm. if you're really just interested in the nuts and bolts, there might be a better program for you. I mean, again, we handle it, but we spend more time on how do you come to that intersection of the very private and the very public to um, paraphrase pa Parker Palmer, who's one of our master teacher interviews and is a master teacher. and Because that's what teaching is. You bring so much desire and so much passion but you also bring so much fear because like any kind of performance it's not going to go the way you planned it's not right. going to go the way you rehearsed or the way you hoped and you're going to finish teaching and go oh my god I can't believe I said that <laughs> I forgot that entirely oh I should have done that first why did I, I repeat you know every single time right so that's a big part of what shifts for people I think confidence wise. And then the master teacher interview library is also a huge bonus um, that people get a lot out of. They feel like they have a, a library of mentors. Mm -hmm. So say more about that library because that is something that's very cool. Well, I, I started it when we were teaching Teach Now the first time because I didn't think that Michelle and I were experts enough to be teaching about teaching. <laughs> so I started interviewing other people. And I'm a little obsessive. So I started interviewing more people and we ended up with 44 interviews, 45 teachers, and they cover, they're everything from people like Molly and Mark Silver and Michael and Eric, who are in our brain trust, to people like Flora Bowley, who teaches painting, to um, 
people who are, you know, in instruction design, people like Paul Palmer, Natalie Goldberg, Mark Nepo in the spiritual world, the writing world. And I just tried to ask them all the gritty questions that I had. Elizabeth Lesser tells a great story. She co-founded Omega about dealing with difficult students in a workshop that she's teaching where people are dying. These people are dying, right? So you don't think you can cut them off and how she learned even to do that. Wow. So... And then the cool thing was, is we indexed the library so that you can search for what you need. So if you need help with marketing, if you need help with difficult students, if you need help with confidence, instructional design, you can find, um, you can listen to those interviews that cover that. So it's not overwhelming. That's amazing. I know. And it, that was crowdsourced by alums. No kidding. Yep. yep. Wow. Yeah. And Megan Everett helped do that too. So she's very great at organizing stuff. That is really cool because, as you say, without that, it can be overwhelming. It was. That's why in the beginning it was overwhelming. I'm like, crap, I'm teaching people. One of the main things I teach now is not to overwhelm people, and I'm overwhelming them. Right, right. <laughs> Stop. No. That's so cool. But you know what, I, what I'm loving, Jen, is how even in this conversation, you're modeling the vulnerability that makes a good teacher and always being on your own learning edge. And that's a huge, thank you. That's a huge part of Teach Now that Michelle and I did. We keep in the pre-recorded calls. So the classes themselves are pre-recorded and then there's integration calls that are live with myself and other guests. And the, in the pre-recorded calls, we stop the training over and over again and say, whoops, look what we just did. And that didn't go the way we thought it was or that went different. So we wow. keep pulling back the curtain so I think that's one of my strengths as a teacher is, yes. to, is to not just be vulnerable for the sake of being vulnerable, because that's just ugly, but, <laughs> but to be vulnerable for the sake of, oh, look, this is a teachable moment. Yes. Yes, that is fabulous. So you guys are, you're not just modeling expert teaching, because in my experience, you guys are expert teachers, but you're modeling that internal experience of being a good teacher and the, and the reality of teaching. You can be an expert yes. and reality is still going to be doing its thing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's right. That's what I'm interested in. Um, someone was asking me some questions for an interview and about my essence of my business or something. I thought, well, it's not just authenticity. It's those little interstices, dices, those little places. I know the word, but like interstices. <laughs> Anyway, like, you know, a little in between. <laughs> I like to get in there and go, what would work here? I don't like the broad stroke so much as I like those lessons that yes. we can help each other. Anyway, blah, nice. Blah, blah. nice. So, what teaching trends do you see? Well, um, definitely bite sized pieces. Definitely, um, I like things like what our friend Mark Silver does at Heart of Business. He breaks a larger call into the sections, so you can just listen to the teaching itself or the question and answer part or whatever you want. Um, I love that people give the material in different modalities. So if you're an audio person and you want to download it, if you're visual, trying to give people slides or a video like this. So looking at the different learners people are. Um, I find I think a big trend that's happening is, is something to do with the un unconferencing movement where people instead of going to a conference and sitting down and hearing the sages on the stage they're coming together in interactive ways people are really hungry for that and um, the other trend is to I don't know if this is a trend but it's become more and more important is you have to keep marketing to your students once it's not just about getting them in the door and that means in the door of your regular classroom too you got to keep them engaged and mm -hmm. you got to think like a marketer to do that that's right. Yeah. Yes, because we've talked about what um, my friend Sean D'Souza calls consumption, which on the face of it sounds like kind of a cold word, but to him it means really supporting his students to enjoy the whole meal. Mm -hmm. You know, he is a great teacher. He's one of the master teacher interviews, um, and he just gave so much value about and and you're you're a student of his that yes. I watched you learning cartoon with him he is brilliant at breaking it down yeah. and he talks about this in the master teacher interview how do you break it down into these steps if you overwhelm your students you need to go back to the drawing board yeah. and and I go back every time I teach <laughs> you and me both kiddo <laughs> I know yep 
I'm chunk it down. down right now and I'm like, chunk it down more, chunk it down more. <laughs> yeah, there's some information out there that you can only take in about seven or eight minutes of information and then you need to do something with it. Say more about that. Well, the idea is that your brain, and, and actually I learned some of this from Sean and some of this from our friend Michael bungay Stanier, but I can't find the actual neuroscience behind it because I'm not a very good researcher, but um, it's the idea that it comes in and your brain's stuck until it digests it, and it digests mm. it by turning to the person next to you and talking about it, or by doing an exercise with it, or by, you know, maybe a mind map, mm -hmm. uh, applying it in some way, uh, sharing it. Teaching is actually a great way to learn. We had to do that in our coaching training. Right. Um, I don't know if you remember that. Mm -hmm. Did you have to do it in the graduate level? We didn't. We got a pass in graduate coaching. But that's how I learned ontological coaching was because I had to con uh, convene a group of ordinary people in my town, in my in neighborhood and, and teach them these lofty concepts. They didn't want to be coaches. <laughs> I had to somehow make it palatable to them. And I would quickly realize how I didn't understand as much as I thought I did. Right. And that's an example. Um, so and it's hard, especially online. We want to give a lot of information. We're full of our subject. We love it. It's very hard to realize that more is not better. Right. And that piece of not only chunking it down, but giving people a way to make an experience out of. Yes. And one of the integrated live integration calls this uh, time around with Teach Now is with Randy Buckley. And she has worked with Deepak Chopra and a lot of big people over the years to design curriculum. And mm. so she's going to, we're going to specifically have her on for 90 minutes to brainstorm with people about how do you design experiential experiences. She's super great at that. Oh, that's great. Yeah, Randy is really sharp. Mm -hmm. So how, how could somebody get started creating a program that's not overwhelming, but that's really useful? That, where did they go for that? Go to your beginner's mind. Go mm -hmm. to what was it like when you were learning that thing? And go back, like relax on your couch and send yourself back. What was it like? What was the light bulb moment? Mm. How could you create a light bulb moment or two or three for your people? And then build out a little bit of the material, a little bit, a quarter of what you think you would. <laughs> and then throw half of that out around those little light bulb moments. So if your light bulb moment, for me, there was a light bulb moment when I was in film school. I was 19 years old. I was at USC film school. And my, t my screenwriting teacher had been going on for weeks. Character is action. Action is character. And I'd be like, and one day, middle of class, he's talking about something else entirely. I went, oh my God, out loud. <laughs> action is character. And Mark stops. And he goes, yeah, Jen, you've got it. <laughs> so what were those moments for you? And then how would you, was there something that helped you get there? Or what would help you create that moment for someone? And so start much more smaller and more intimate than you would think. I think when we start at the big 10,000 foot level or 100,000 foot level, that's when we get like, oh my God, I have to teach them everything about screenwriting. Right. Yeah. Right. I love that idea of light bulb moments. Yeah. yeah. And feel for it in your body. Like take yourself for a walk or relax or take, go into the bath. Feel for those moments of excitement because those are when something really clicked for you. And what all happens, right. sometimes, you know, we have a lot of them. We do. And you know, what comes alive for me with that is a light bulb moment is something you really get. Yes. Exactly. So you really can teach this because you really did get this. Yes, which is a brilliant point because that's what we're looking for in Teach Now to help people ground themselves in their own experience. Because the other thing that happens to teachers is they're online now where comparison is the rule of the day. And you're like, well, why would anyone want to learn um, wealth? about wealth from me. Why would anyone want to, you know, learn about writing from me? And, and, but when you connect to those experiences, you connect to your stories and you connect your voice. And then yeah. that helps you come up with, with what's your unique offer and container that will attract your just right students. Yeah. Love and I am talking about self, self-employed people here. The Teach Now is taken by people who aren't self-employed and aren't marketing themselves and okay. they find it to be useful too. Okay. That the notion of stories and voice that mm. seems really important. It is because stories, of course, as we know, are sticky, and facts are you know, you can't remember facts, especially when you're over 50, like we are. <laughs> I, wait a minute, am I over 50? Oh, no, not yet. <laughs> when did not that yet. happen? 
<laughs> I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, uh, stories and voice. It just occurs to me there's a connection there. Yes, because when you have your stories, you're owning your experience, your confidence level goes up. And then the, the, the voice is, um, I think, the mood or the tone. And it's often like I'm about this and I'm not necessarily about that. So, for example, this may not be the best example since it's not teaching, it's a writing example, but I'm trying to work on a new project. And you've watched me struggling with, is it a, does it about grief? And it's like, no, 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 it's grief comes in here, but it's not about grief. It's about this particular area. Yeah. So you're feeling for that. And I think your stories and your aha moments get you a taste of it. It's not necessarily super factual or concrete. I think it's more intuitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Maybe a palette. Ooh, that's nice. Yes, Miss Cartoonist. <laughs> so what's your learning edge with teaching these days? Um, I need to find some technology that allows me to see some more of my students. Mm. I am using Instant Teleseminar right now, and people love to dial on through the web interface and to type their comments and questions. So I hardly hear anybody else the entire 90 minutes. Oh, yeah. I get off the phone. I'm crabby and I'm tired. And even though I know the material was fabulous, I'm not feeling the exchange that yeah. I need as a yep. teacher. So I don't know if I'm going to go back to go to meeting, which I don't like because you have to download a plugin and it's confusing for people because um, they have a video interface or mm -hmm. what. But that's really bugging me. So that's my sort of technology edge. Mm -hmm. And my other edge is coming up with really good metaphorical images for slide decks for visual learners. I'm not a visual learner. Um, so I'm like, Oh, I really resent making slide decks. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting, Jen, because you are so great with metaphor, it never would have occurred to me that that would be a challenge for you. Yeah, and I went to film school. It's really hysterical. But um, yeah, so I get some help with it. But it's really an important point in teaching out. You are going to lose the learners that don't learn like you if you don't stretch yourself. Mm -hmm. We talk about that. Yeah. Wow. So... Tell us a little, um, you're doing a, a preview call, kind of a, actually, I think it's the first lesson of Teach Now, isn't it? It is, man. This is something I hit upon that I love. Feel free to steal it, everybody. When, and if you hate to do preview calls, if you hate to market, don't. Teach. Teaching is marketing. If you're doing it in bite-sized chunks, then mm -hmm. don't try to teach and give everybody everything because then they don't want to buy anything. So our first class is completely free. It's a real class. You, you must listen to it as part of the Teach Not curriculum. You can't skip it. Mm -hmm. we, we refer back to the things I'm teaching it, like helicopter teaching and um, everything else that just flew out of my head that I'm going to teach about. Um, so yeah, I will pause and I'll do about eight minutes of maybe five, eight minutes of going to the sales page and saying, this is how the course works in the middle. Very transparent about it. The class ends and I stay on as long as you want for Q&A. And that feels really comfortable to me. And I've tried the, oh, let me tease you and let me give you content rich. And that just doesn't work for me. Right. But really showing up and teaching you the best I can and knowing I'm giving you great value. I mean, I know that people tell me that that class alone changes things for them. So yeah. that makes me confident then in the sales process. Yeah. And I've heard that from people as well, that that class alone changes for people. And you know what I love? Not everybody signs up for it, but you know. No. Oh. But what I love that just happened and what you do throughout Teach Now is that everything you do models everything you teach. I try, I try, because that's, otherwise I feel creepy. Well, yeah, there's that. There's, no <laughs> there's that creepy thing. Yeah. This is what I think all those coaches are going on when they say, live your values. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I feel creepy if I do that. I'm just not going to do that. <laughs> And and so there is that, you know, it's the authenticity and the not creepy piece, but it also is such a rich, um, it's so rich for your students because they get to see it in action and feel it in action. So it's yeah. not theoretical, it's grounded. Yeah, and that's important when you're not good at making slide decks. <laughs> No, I mean, I mean, serious, you have to look at what your strengths are. And you try to build in ways to reach other people. But you're not a match for everybody as a teacher. Don't try to be. If you don't like goofy, if you don't like laughter, if you're not comfortable with a certain level of intimacy, don't sign up because mm -hmm. that's what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Right. 
That's great. So any parting words, things you want people to know? Teach Now is the name of the course for a reason, because I really <laughs> do believe you can teach now. And I don't believe that any of us need to wait. Oh. Maybe you can't teach in front of an audience at Princeton tomorrow. Maybe you're not even ready to charge for what you teach. But I know that you're ready to teach now. I know that you know enough to teach now. And I believe that the world needs all of this wisdom because otherwise we're facing this thing called a mass extinction. And somehow I think all of us owning our wisdom and teaching will help that not happen. Call mm. me naive and, and um, optimistic. <laughs> yeah, I'm buying it. I'm buying it. Well, you can sign up for the preview call for that first lesson. There's a link right under this video. So I strongly encourage you do that. What's the date of the lesson again, Jennifer? I didn't ask you. April 3rd, my sister Michelle's birthday. Oh, great. Michelle's birthday, April 3rd, link below. Yeah. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much. It's always so inspiring to talk to you. Oh, me too. Did I? Let's have lunch again soon. Okay. <laughs> Very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.